Hello everyone and welcome to another instalment of Beyond the Mask. In this episode today, we're going to be discussing Amber Freeman from Scream 2022, or more specifically, analysing the theory that Amber may have been obsessed with Billy Loomis's accomplice and serial killer from the original Woodsboro killing spree in 1996. I'm of course talking about Stu Marker. This assessment comes from various hints within the movie itself, through aspects of dialogue that Amber says, and for some inconsistencies that the character says in comparison with her own accomplice Richie Kirsch. So sit back, relax, as I explain Amber Freeman's obsession with Stu Marker. The motivation for Richie and Amber during their killing spree in 2022 was directly stated on screen, with Richie discussing their disappointment with the Stab franchise and their desire to create a real life reboot featuring an all new cast and the return of some of the legacy characters. Richie is believed to be the mastermind of this spree, but according to show directors Matt Bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillett, they have stated that despite Richie's beliefs, it's actually Amber who orchestrated the killing spree and operated the whole thing solo. So if Amber was the mastermind, why did she present herself as the accomplice? Why was she happy to take a back seat in favour of Richie? To understand this theory I have, we're going to have to assess Amber's dialogue, behaviour and her actions throughout the movie. So during the finale, Amber Freeman confesses to Sidney Prescott and Sam Carpenter that her parents bought 261 Turner Lane, the former home of Stu Marker and the location of the murderous climax to his and Billy's 1996 killing spree. She states that she begun researching the killings and became interested in the Stab franchise from that point. It's my belief, however, that Amber may have been more directly obsessed with Stu than she was Stab. During the killer reveal, Richie discussed Stab and his desire to reboot the franchise following Stab 8. Amber, however, had different issues with the franchise. You know what the biggest problem with the Stab movies is? There's no Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers, no bad guy to keep coming back. Amber felt there should have been a killer underneath the ghost face mask to continue returning. One thing that Scream 2022 tried to do was present a negative aspect of fandoms. It's interesting that in the real world, amongst us fans, a large percentage believes Stu Marker is alive and that he should have been resurrected at some point in the franchise. On top of this, it was writer Kevin Williamson's original idea to bring Stu back in his scrapped version of Scream 3. So if Amber orchestrated this whole thing behind the scenes, and she had an obsession with Stu Marker, was this presented on screen, or was it hidden in subtext? Now keep the notion that Amber was obsessed with Stu in your minds as I talk you through this evidence. Amber Freeman was completely psychotic, driven by an evil personified plan to recreate the original Woodsboro killings that made the first Stab movie famous. She intended on placing herself in the accomplice role and had no desire to take responsibility for the spree. Her intentions were to be the host of a house party, which would serve as the basis for the reveal and climax of the spree. It may be unpopular, but it's clear to me throughout that Amber had no specific plan, except to lure Sam back to Woodsboro and to frame her for the murders. The reality is there was no pattern to her kills. She confessed she killed Dewey Riley in an attempt to show her movie had stakes. However, Dewey's death was down to luck. Luck, because Dewey was there by chance. In her climax, Amber displays erratic, compulsive behaviour. Her speech becomes childlike. She's often compared to Stu in the climax. But here is the big difference. Stu Marker displayed erratic, childlike behaviour throughout Scream 1996. His playful nature actually came across pretty harmless initially. His eventual reveal to be the killer was elevated, but not much of a stretch from his already established personality. Amber throughout 2022 displayed a calm, collective, in-control persona 
before the climax kicked in and she was able to adopt these childlike characteristics. Characteristics, in my opinion, that were purposely copied from Stu Marker. She wanted to become him in those final moments, being the accomplice, the unstable person who was influenced by the person in charge. The reality of this was actually completely different. Amber's love for Stab is also questionable throughout the movie. Despite her attempt to recreate the original movie, she seemed to lack in knowledge. There were many inconsistencies when Ghostface was challenging characters on the phone in 2022. Many aspects of the Stab franchise were either incorrect and somewhat different to how the audience remembered them. It's my belief this may have been intentional. Amber was more interested in creating a killer that could be resurrected. She may have been inconsistent with her stab knowledge, but she was heavily aware of Stu's family life. Hence her purposely deciding to kill Vince Schneider due to his connections to Stu. I felt this death was symbolic, specifically for Amber. So with all this in mind, what was Amber's plan? There were many inconsistencies surrounding this. Richie's claims to frame Sam, in my opinion, don't make a whole lot of sense in the grand scheme of things. Would it be a huge stretch to believe that maybe Richie understood the plan was to frame Sam? But in actual fact, Amber intended on emerging as the new Stu from the massacre. She lived in his house, she adopted his personality in the climax, and she directly revealed that her interest in him more or less influenced her. Amber was cold, psychotic, but in my opinion, incredibly aware of what she was doing and what she wanted to achieve. And that's it for this video. I hope this has helped highlight an interesting theory about Amber's character in Scream 2022. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And remember, it's time to pass the torch.